Hello lovely people, this week I want to talk about a book I read recently and that is Wild Wood Dancing by Juliette Marillier. I really enjoy Juliette Marillier's writing. This is the first time I've read something that is not the Seven Waters series. Um, so it was really interesting to read like a one shot of hers rather than something that's an extended series. Um, this follows Jenna and her sisters. They live in a castle in Transylvania um, surrounded by this wild wood forest. Every month on the full moon they're able to enter the wild wood where they um, are able to dance with the fae and all of the other creatures that exist there and then they have to return to their world by the morning. It's like the highlight of their months. They've been able to do this since they were children. Um, where this book starts their father is very ill and so he's going um, traveling to somewhere else to recuperate in a slightly better climate. Um, there, he leaves the girls in charge of the household. Jenna and her sisters are allowed like um, an element of freedom that women in this time normally would not. So um, Jenna is, has been trained to look after the accounts. Uh, Paola is being um, educated by a local priest, stuff like this. So essentially their father is going away for his health, but he's leaving them in charge and they have shared out the burden equally. Um, while he is away, their cousin Cesar um, starts to overstep his bounds and try and take over in ways that don't just relate to this world, but he also starts to pose a threat to the Wildwood. This is all traced back to, and this isn't a spoiler, this is told to you very early on, this is all traced back to a moment in their childhood where uh, Jenna and Cesar and Cesar's older brother Costi are playing in the woods and Costi drowns. So Cesar has this um, vendetta against the, the wild people because um, he, they, they're blamed for his brother's death. As this book progresses, obviously, um, this threat becomes quite high. It begins to threaten not just um, the world that the girls live in, but the world beyond that. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I sort of just wanted to talk around it a little bit because I literally read it in a day and I stayed up till midnight to finish it. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the next day, so I thought, let's like dump some of these thoughts in a video. I had a really fun time with this. I really enjoy Juliette Marillier's writing style. One thing that I think she definitely excels at is writing about the natural world and about people's exploration of the natural world. So like Jenna, and um, she has like a little friend who's like a frog called Gogu, who like sits on a little shoulder. Um, Jenna and Gogu, um, they have like picnics in the forest. They f she feels a great connection to this forest, which a lot of the other villagers view um, with fear, but also with respect, with this idea that you get what you put into it. So if you um, enter this forest with bad intent, then it is very likely that bad things will happen to you. But if you treat it with respect, then you will hopefully get respect in return. Um, so Jenna's explorations in this forest were really gorgeous to read about. I also really thoroughly did enjoy these um, moments when they go to um, the Wildwood. The whole reason it's called Wildwood Dancing is that the girls go and it's um, the full moon dance, so they get to, they dance with the fair folk and stuff like that. Those passages as well, being in um, the Wildwood for the full moon dancing, were just like delicious to read, like I really enjoyed those descriptions, I thought they were really delightful, and I really enjoyed um, each of the sisters has, they're very clearly like have their own personality, like from the littlest one who likes to like play around with all the little tiny creatures while they're there, to Paola who has all of these um, debates with like witches and stuff about like potions and alchemy and stuff like that, and then um, uh, Yulia and Jenna and Tati, who are the older ones, and um, how being slightly older, like what that journey is like, how how does this experience of going to this full moon dancing change as you get older and you mature and that sort of thing. Um, a thread in this which I found really interesting is um, the night folk, aka what we would call vampires, are a presence here. They arrive and one of the sisters gets drawn into like a plotline involving them. And um, Juliette Marinier talks about at the back what sort of sources, what she sort of drew on in this depiction and in this way of trying to essentially claim back the night folk against what Dracula has built them up to be in our minds and to go back to those original like folk tales and beliefs and stuff and be like, okay, well, what is that actually like? And that was an interesting exploration of, I enjoy this stuff to do with um, Faye and all of the broadness that that word would encompass and the way that these things uh, have their own rules and 
you need to learn those rules in order to attempt to like essentially survive your encounters with them. I feel like that's something that is really strong with this night folk plot line. So those are all things that I really enjoyed about this book. Um, I, one thing that I will say that is something that stopped me from rating this book higher than I did. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. I had a thoroughly good time. It was probably the higher end for 3 for me because I just really enjoyed it. But I did find aspects of the plot quite predictable. Um, insofar as I predicted them. <laughs> you know, predictable is not always bad. It's just that there were a couple of reveals that I very much predicted in advance and that's not necessarily bad it's just like it does take somewhat of the like gasp realization moment out of it you know um i won't see what those things are for because this is going to be spoiler free i also found um cesar was also an interesting figure because um on the one hand i found him a very effective villain because his villainy begins quite rooted in real lived misogyny essentially like uh, Jenna and her sisters are um, very capable but he doesn't allow himself to see that and the types of ways that he goes about taking power away from them start off being very insidious because it is ways that tie into just like misogyny that permeates the culture so there is no way for them to complain or um, appeal for justice in regards to these things because most people would be like oh but you're women so you can't handle that anyway so of course Cesar should take control of this aspect and it's this disempowerment that is um it happens in almost like trickles and then it just becomes a huge thing what I will say is is that as it continued and as it amped up a bit it did get ever so slightly like cartoony villainy thing but I did actually one thing I enjoyed was the way that um, it was very clear that Cesar was making decisions. There are a number of moments in which both Jenna offers him ways to act differently, and then also other more magical figures might also offer him ways to act differently, and um, the ways in which he shapes his own fate. And it is a fate that is entirely unavoidable, but it is like, then you reach a point where you have like, you know, if you've missed so many signs and then you fall off the edge of a cliff, it's like, who do you have to blame but yourself? So yes, this is just sort of like a little potting out of my thoughts upon immediately finishing this book. The things that I liked, the things that I found a little bit predictable but still did enjoy. Um, I just think that Juliette Marillier always gives, like, a fun read. There's probably a lot more that I could say, but I don't want to go into any spoilers, so I will leave it there. I would love to know from you, um, have you read this? How did you find it? How did you find it compared to other Juliette Marilliers? Um, I would love to know because my Juliette Marillier uh, reading is slightly limited. I've only I've read two of the books from Seven Waters and then this one. I know that she has many other series. Um, if you are a big Juliette Marillier fan, I would love to know where you would recommend exploring next. I do have the third book in the Seven Waters series to read to continue that at some point. But um, I did really enjoy reading like a one shot of hers rather than something that is going across many books and building up to stuff and everything. But I hope you're having the loveliest of days and I will see you next time for something